Okay, roll them. What is your name and age? My name is Sterling Silverman, a.k.a. Survival Doc, and I'm 54 years old. Where are you from? Originally, I'm from a small town in Mississippi, but I've lived in a suburb of St. Louis, Missouri for about 20 years. How long have you lived in your current home? I've lived in this house for about 20 years. Are you married or single? Married. If you have, oh, you want me to read that like that too? If you have a significant spouse, other, how do they feel about your prepping and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All right, w would you run that by me again? <clears throat> okay, you said you're married, right? How does your wife feel about your prepping the survival skills? Is she supportive? Yeah, she's on board with me. I think one thing that convinced her was the fact that I told her we, start, we should start buying gold and silver back when the price of silver was about 4 or $5 an ounce. And now silver is $45 an ounce. So she's beginning to understand what I've been talking about. Uh, is she involved in your prepping? Well, not as much as I am, of course, but uh, she does, uh, she is supportive, and uh, one thing we do is we go camping, and that way we can check out some of our equipment, and she does go camping with me, so I'll have to say she is a sport. Is there any other prepping activities that you do together? Uh, well, camping I mentioned and uh, gardening. Uh, she helps me a lot in the yard and in the garden and uh, with the fruit trees and she also helps me uh, put up the food from our garden and our orchard. Uh, she helps me do the canning and so yes yeah, she is pretty helpful. Do you have any kids? How many? Yes we have two kids. They are both grown and they have kids of their own. Do they help? Uh, how do they feel about your prepping? Well my son is on board with me and he's actually has been doing some prepping of his own even though he lives in a different state uh, he is actually doing some food storage and some other prepping uh, my daughter is not really on board with us I have tried to convince her to do some things but she is um, not really convinced any other family members do they encourage you or you prepping or not well, I don't really have a lot of family living close by, so I'd have to say no. So, none of them are peppers either? No. What about your friends? Are they sympathetic to your survivalist ways, or do they think you're crazy? Well, at first, my friends thought I was crazy. But uh, when I f because I first started prepping 15 or so years ago, and people could not see what they're beginning to see today. But now that the economy is collapsing, the dollar's collapsing, uh, precious metals, gold and silver are going to the moon. Um, these are the people that I was telling that they should buy uh, gold and silver back when the price was five, six, eight, ten dollars an ounce. And now they are again beginning to see what I'm, I've been talking about. So you try to educate them on your views? Yes. Is there one person's mind that you wish you could change in regards to their lack of prepping? And if so, who is it and why? How would you go about informing them? I would say my neighbor. And uh, the reason for that is because uh, we're putting up a lot of food storage. And uh, if food becomes in short supply, of course, my neighbors are going to be looking for food and uh, they're going to be looking at my food storage and if they had a food storage of their own they wouldn't be um, looking at my food storage. Do you run drills or scenarios with your family or your closest friends? Uh, and if so, who do you require to participate in these drills? Uh, we don't really run drills um, other than uh, I mentioned we do go camping we have a lot of uh, survival supplies that overlap with our camping supplies and like uh, portable stoves and things like that and uh, when we go camping it, it gives us a chance to get out some of our equipment make sure everything is working properly and uh, so other than the camping I'd say we don't really run drills what was the pivotal event that made you decide it was time to start prepping? Well, I started prepping back in the late 80s, and uh, what really convinced me was, um, was two things. 
Uh, one was at that time I mentioned we lived in Mississippi. We lived on the Gulf Coast, Gulf, Gulfport, Mississippi, and uh, we would get hurricane warnings and evacuations generally a couple of times a year. And what impressed me was the fact that even though these people were used to having hurricane evacuations, still whenever we had one, the grocery stores would be overrun, the shelves would be empty, everybody would be there buying batteries and bottled water, and I'm thinking, uh, this is something that we know is going to happen every year, hurricane season. Why don't you store up some batteries or some water in your house so you're not in a frantic uh, trying to buy things at the last minute in the grocery store? And so I started uh, storing bottled water, batteries, simple things like that. Um, and then uh, the other thing that happened was I became aware of the government debt and the fact that I was paying money into Social Security that I was counting on for my retirement and I realized that the government was spending that money as fast as we were paying it into the system and with the increasing government debt coming I realized that when I'm, I'm right in the middle of the baby boomer generation and I realized that when all of us baby, baby boomers started to retire at the same time it was going to overload the uh, Social Security system and with the government debt uh, the, the government was, was going to have no choice other than to just print their way out of the debt and they were going to pay baby boomers retirements with inflated dollars. And, uh, and history has proven that I was right and that is exactly what the government is doing right now and they are printing so many dollars that the dollar is collapsing in value and if we do get our Social Security money uh, it will be inflated dollars and I don't think it will be enough to uh, for us to live on. So what I decided to do at that time was I decided to save and primarily I decided to save gold and silver because I knew that uh, when the dollar uh, lost its value that historically gold and silver have always increased in value at the same time and if the gov government was going to inflate away their debt then that was going to cause the prices of gold and silver to skyrocket. And so that was the other event that got me into prepping was um, uh, putting all my savings in gold and silver and trying to accumulate as much as I could during my lifetime. There are many apocalypse, natural disasters, and government conspiracy theories floating around. Which one or ones do you believe and why? Well, the main one I believe in is the collapse of the dollar. And uh, I believe that this uh, collapse of the dollar has been orchestrated to a large extent uh, by the government, but particularly not so much by our government officials, but by the bankers who control our government. Because they have used their ability to create an unlimited amount of dollars as a way to control our politicians and to control our economy. How far along have you come in putting together food, water, medical supplies, and the like? Do you feel like you're running out of time? Well, I've been storing away items like this for years, and uh, I have people ask me all the time, uh, how much is enough? And my answer to them is, I don't think there's ever enough. And the reason for that is even if we have enough food for our immediate family, uh, we're going to have other family members who are not preparing, who are going to be looking, we're not, and you're certainly not going to let other family members go hungry. We also have neighbors who are not preparing, and again, you're not going to sit there with food storage supplies while your neighbors are starving to death. So realistically, uh, we are prepared not just for ourselves, but also for any others who might need our help. So I don't think you can have enough supplies. So my goal is to just put together as much as I reasonably can. Uh, as far as urgency, um, I don't really feel an urgency. I do feel that the time uh, in which we will need these supplies is fast approaching, but this is something that I've been preparing for for years, so I don't really feel an urgency. I, a lot of other people I know are feeling an urgency and I can certainly understand why because they haven't been preparing or they're not prepared and they are recognizing that uh, events are unwinding 
to the point where within the next year or so um, they're going to be needing some uh, preparation supplies. List the different locations in your home that are your survival spots. That is, where do you store food <coughs> and supplies? And why did you choose these lo locations? Tell us about everything you have stored in each location. Well, we are using just about every corner of the house where we have space. Uh, for instance, in the loft of our garage, we are storing all of our camping supplies. In our garage, we are storing uh, propane. Uh, in the attic, we are storing extra paper goods like toilet papers. Um, but the majority of our supplies are in this room right here and we're in my basement right now and the reason I use my basement is for two reasons. One is because it is uh, a part of the house where there's a lot of room where we're not using uh, the room for other uses and two is a, a basement is a nice, um, it's a cooler place uh, in the house where the temperature is more constant than other parts of the house and so that is an environment that is more conducive for say long-term food storage. Do you have a bug out vehicle and what supplies do you keep in it? I don't really have a bug out vehicle. Um, I do not plan on bugging out. Um, I plan on staying in our home uh, if at all possible. I certainly, the last place in the world that I want to be is in a government shelter. Um, so uh, the only reason I would leave my home is if it was such a disaster that forced me out of my home. Uh, so we are not really planning on bugging out. We do have our bug out bags just in case we do have to leave uh, our home. If our house were, were to uh, be demolished by a uh, um, earthquake or something like that, I mean, we there is uh, the contingency for leaving the house. Uh, but I don't really want to leave the house. Uh, we do have our, our vehicle uh, in the trunk of our vehicle. I do store a lot of emergency supplies and the reason for that is in case something happens while we're in our car away from the house, we do have a large bag of a lot of emergency supplies in the vehicle of our car, but I wouldn't really call it our bug out vehicle. It's more of our, our family car. Do you have a root cellar or an underground bunker? If so, what supplies do you keep there? And do you have any other survival facilities outside of your home that you maintain? No, I don't have a root cellar um, or bunker. I refer to my basement as my bunker uh, uh, in jest, jokingly. But um, no, I don't really have a separate facility. We do everything uh, right here at the house. Do you have any survival skills such as a shelter building, fire starting farming, or hunting and gathering techniques? If so, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis to keep them sharp? Well, I do have some survival skills. Of course, this is something that I've learned along the way. I've read a lot of books on survivalism, but I am an herbalist by trade, so I do know how to make a lot of my own medicines. Uh, I grow. Uh, we do not use uh, medical doctors. We do not use prescription drugs. We use uh, herbal uh, and natural methods of uh, health care. Uh, which helps us out a lot. Uh, there are um, certain herbs that I grow myself and certain herbs that I buy that we use for uh, our own uh, medicines. Um, what was the other part of that question? Shelter building, fire starting farming, or hunting, gathering techniques. Oh, hunting, yes, yes, hunt, skills, okay, back to the skills. Uh, hunting, uh, yes, I have uh, hunted over the years. Um, I do have hunting uh, rifles, and I have uh, been deer hunting, and um, I am uh, skilled enough to hunt some of my own food, and I'm also um, uh, skilled enough to, uh, to butcher and clean. Uh, my own food. Uh, for one thing, we, we raise some um, rabbits, which I kill and butcher for food, and I have also butchered a, uh, a deer. So um, I am uh, um, able to do that kind of thing. Have you taken any survival classes? If so, please describe them. Um, no, I haven't really taken any survival classes. Uh, there are a lot of books out there on survivalism. And I have read uh, a lot of books. What do you, what do you like to do for fun? For fun, 
I like to go camping and of course camping does help with your um, hone your uh, survival skills because when you're camping you're away from your uh, running water and your electricity and things like that. Generally we go primitive uh, camping uh, in which we're living in a tent and without electricity and uh, so we rely on um, our camping stoves and our campfires and stuff like that and uh, we enjoy doing that that's a lot of fun that does help uh, us keep our our skills uh, other uh, things I like to uh, I like to shoot I like to I, uh, I collect uh, guns and I like to, to go out target practicing with my guns and of course that helps me with my survival skills because it helps me get skillful with my rifles uh, so that when I need them to uh, hunt for food uh, I'll have that skill there. Is there anything else you'd like us to know about in regards to your prepping or disaster theories? Well, um, no, I think, um, well, there's really a, there's really a lot to lot to cover, and uh, that's why I have a website, thenewsurvivalist.com. I um, it, that's not a question that I could answer briefly. Uh, uh, but um, as I say in, on my website, the motto of my website is be prepared or be prepared to be fleeced. Is that all? Mm -hmm. Okay.